Saluting Prince Philip here at the report from Tiger Mountain, Land of Hope and Glory by Algar. Bring it on, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, Prince Philip Tribute from the report from Tiger Mountain. Stick around. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Philip has ascended to the next level and, um, you know, we'd like to pay tribute to him here at the report from Tiger Mountain because, um, you know, I mean, he was a lovable rogue, let's admit it, you know, and uh, I've always been somebody who's been rather fond of the um, the British royal family and this is a subject I, I will do uh, uh, for a later um, podcast on this exact topic, but I believe that there are, you know, we always talk about, you know, the cabal or, you know, obviously there are many cabals. There's the Chinese one, there's the Saudi one, there's, you know, the Israeli one. There are different cabals that represent different interests. But in a way, there are, I believe that the one we talk about, the globalist cabal, that I think would be one I would describe as, you know, maybe something like Spectre, it was someone like Soros as a kind of Bond villain, etc. And But I do believe there is another cabal. There is a cabal that is essentially a good one. That Say, for example, let's look at Get Smart. There was like, you know, chaos and control, right? Control was the good one. So I believe there is a good cabal out there, and that's the cabal that holds everything together. Because if it was just the, the evil cabal, you know, that was really predominant and hegemonic all over the world, they would have taken over by now. You know, whatever their evil plan is, it would be way more ahead. So there, there's something stopping them. And I've always thought that the British royal family was part of the good cabal. It's not like they, they're completely innocent. They never get involved in any trouble. Obviously, the good cabal has to do a lot of bad things to fight the bad cabal constantly. They have to get up to all kinds of evil, no doubt. So someone like Prince Philip was an interesting figure to me. And I think you can tell by the way the globalists have attacked the royal family. Say for Prince Andrew trying to lure him into the honey trap there with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, you can tell. And also with Meghan Markle, the way Meghan Markle has tried to drag Harry away and create a War of the Roses kind of situation there, that the royal family appears to be the enemy of the globalists in some way. So, um, you know, and maybe I believe that they're part of the good cabal. Um, so this is very interesting. This is why I like Prince Philip. Now, Prince Philip is somebody who's probably gotten his hands dirty on a few different things. There are rumours that he was involved in the death of, Princess Diana, that he may have even gave the order to uh, to bump her off because she was going to have a child with Dodi al fayed that would have made a kind of Arab um, half-brother to uh, the, well, the King of England, which would be uh, Prince William, who's coming down the line to uh, be king one day after Charles. So, you know, it's a very interesting situation. But, you know, I like Prince uh, Philip. I like the way he's politically incorrect um, on a personal level. He used to make these kind of like non-PC jokes. But people often said that those jokes were not just to, uh, you know, Sometimes they were disparaging of not only him, sometimes they were self-deprecatory, self -deprecatory, sometimes they were, critics, they were kind of self-critical of the royal family, sometimes they were critical of minorities or the people he was with. But the point of those, those, those jokes that were sometimes a little bit on the nose is that they were icebreakers because when you're someone like Prince Philip or the Queen, you're constantly meeting people who are bowing down to you and it, it kind of broke the ice when somebody did something a little bit naughty or something. And I think that was the point of Prince Philip's sense of humour. But he's got that famous quote, like, you know, when I die, I hope I come back as a virus. Obviously, that was used a lot of people who are critical. But I think that's obviously a joke, even though it bears a strange relevance to uh, what's going on at the moment with COVID-19, does it? Maybe they sent Prince Philip back in time and he's already come back. You know? But um, this is really amusing. And uh, it, one of the things I liked about Prince Philip, obviously, he was a he was, um, you know, on a more serious note, he was a kind of, uh, you know, a real, uh, the backbone of, 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 of Queen Elizabeth II's reign, which has been quite spectacular now. I don't know how long, it's coming up to 70 years, isn't it? You know, it's, it, maybe it's over 70 years. Um, you know, she's been around a long time, uh, and 60 years at least. And, um, you know, it, it's quite extraordinary, uh, the support he gave her. And they're a very nice couple, as far as I can tell. And, um, you know, I think he'll be missed. And I think patriotic Australians who are monarchists like myself, or even people who are just patriotic Australians will miss uh, Prince Philip, people like Tony Abbott and many other people in the Liberal Party were supporters of Prince Philip. And, um, you know, I guess that's all I really wanted to say, you know, and, um, you know, I think when I, th I want you to think about the idea of a good and bad cabal because I'm going to do a specific report from Tiger Mountain on that in the near future, maybe when we get out of lockdown because this one's still recorded in lockdown. But um, I just wanted to salute Prince Philip as he rises to the next level of being and continues to fight uh, the bad cabal on whatever plane of existence he is at. And once again, bring up Land of Hope and Glory by Algar, English patriotism, Australian patriotism forever. Thank you very much.